Hey there, it's the 1st of April, so we're starting the vlog. Um, so the end of March was pretty much summarizing all of March <laughs> and kind of looking at what I need to do. Um, I actually got out today my four blue skirts that I need to pattern, not pattern match, but color match a blue bodice for. So this one is a two-toned blue. So it's got this pretty floral pattern and then a powder blue. This is a synthetic fabric. So I have that blue one. I have the blue skirt that I made for my frozen outfit. And then I have my light blue. Now, from looking at uh, the different colors of these three skirts, I think I need a darker blue bodice to kind of go across the ranges of blue. And I wanna make one blue bodice that's like a summer weight, long sleeved bodice to go with all three because the really light blue one that is a one layer skirt, doesn't have an interlining. The two-tone blue is interlined in a sheet fabric, so it can go fall, winter, or summer, spring. And then my frozen outfit is all lightweight cottons. So I wanna make sure to have a bodice that I can kind of wear with all three, because I find that what I'm doing with these bodices is I'm just wearing a white blouse. And I'd like to add some color. <laughs> Um, I almost wish that I had some dark violet fabric to match some violets in the blues, but I don't have any violet or purple or maroon fabric. So, um, what I think I have enough fabric of is a white striped, blue striped shirting fabric. And I may go in that direction and make a white with blue accents bodice to go with these three, because if I do that, I think that pattern-wise, it won't conflict so much with this diamond frozen pattern and the blue floral. So that's kind of what I'm doing today. I'm going to work on fabric pattern matching. And then I have this, um, what's it called? Black snail pattern. I have some gaiters and I have a pair of bloomers that I want to cut out some mock-ups for. I desperately need some gaiters going into the hiking season because I want to wear more of my historically inspired hiking clothes and I really don't like the shift of the look between historically inspired clothing and modern hiking shoes. <laughs> I want to kind of blend that look a little bit better. So that's kind of what I'm tentatively going to work on today. Um, there's a big to-do being talked about on the backside in the costuming groups about Disney-inspired Victorian wear, which I think is fun, um, which is totally what I've done with the Frozen outfit, as I've totally taken a natural form era design and applied a Frozen to cosplay-type theme to it. Um, I would really love to collaborate more, but my problem is that I'm kind of a slow, I mean, I say I'm a slow creator because I am. And then in another way, I am just a prolific artist. So I produce a lot of things all of the time, but my timelines don't sync up to collaborations very easily. It's really hard for me to drop all of the things that I'm currently working on and do a collaboration mix with somebody and then be able to go back and work and still have the momentum on the other things. And I think it just has to do with my neurodivergent brain. I just don't work the same way other people do. It's not because I don't want to. Oh, I desperately want to. I want to be able to drop everything I'm doing. Go. I mean, I did. I dove into a two hour dive today. Somebody mentioned Disney cosplay, Victorian Disney cosplay. And I went, Oh, I have all these ideas. And, um, 
I know that currently, uh, March and April, Noelle's working on her Merida, um, outfit. And when I saw that outfit, I was like, oh my goodness. And I went back to my sketchbook and I actually have a Victorian natural form era cosplay of the main character in that movie. And... I also have still a hankering to do a Victorian Anna from Frozen. I have ideas. I just don't have the... I can't keep up with other people's collaborations very easily. I kind of work at my own pace and in my own art. And right now I'm very much into creating my history-bound daily wear wardrobe. That's what I'm really into right now. And the reason I'm doing that is... I want to create a baseline wardrobe that I can just add a piece here and a piece there to because I do have all these other things that I want to do. I want to do more cosplay. I want to do more. I really have this Tudor gown. I want to work on some embroidery and finish and like I have all these things, but I feel like my day-to-day -day clothing situation needs to be solved. I'm getting there. I really am. But I have three skirts I don't wear because I don't have a bodice that goes with them. That I feel like isn't matchy-matchy, but can be interchanged with my wardrobe. So that's where I'm fixated right now. <laughs> and I don't even know why I feel like I have to apologize and explain it. But I do because I feel like I belong to this community of costumers and costumers and so many of them are jumping on different bandwagons and following the algorithms at certain times and i feel like i'm a little bit left behind and it's not because anybody is doing anything wrong it's that my brain and my timeline are just not everybody else's and so i'm a little bit behind the curve in subscriptions i'm behind the curve in audience i'm behind the curve in you know like hitting that rocket number that shoots you into monetization and I'm not complaining I'm just I'm explaining okay because I'm not complaining I don't feel like I'm left out but I do feel like I'm behind more behind than left out because the community is so amazing and they are so welcoming and I do have a community of people that support me and encourage me on and cheer me on and I feel very very blessed that way but today I'm having a rough mental health day and my mental health day says they're leaving you behind. Even though intellectually, I know that's not right. Our minds do weird things and I, I struggle with it. Everybody struggles with something different and this is my struggle bus today. <laughs> so I'm going to get back to doing this and I should be filming a little bit as I go. I really want to make sure I get a lot of uh, raw footage up on Patreon this month. That's kind of one of my April goals is to be more consistent with getting behind the scenes footage raw, unedited out there so people can see the whole process. No matter how boring it is, there is a lot of stuff that goes on in the background. And it shows a lot of how I process through things. And that's one of the reasons that I want to put that footage up. Okay, I'm going to get to it. Uh, the next step is actually to make my um, bodice to go with it. Uh, I've gone back and forth about a shirt or a bodice, and I've settled on a bodice, and I'm going to make it fairly lightweight. Uh, I have some shirting material I like that I think I'm going to use and decorate it with maybe a little heavier, different kinds of browns. Um, I'm also tossing up the idea of making um, a couple more pairs of these pants because I wore my little minion pants for the rest of yesterday and I absolutely love them. So I think I'm going to make a couple pairs of those. Um, I was really comfortable. I was actually really surprised as to how comfortable they were. I was a little hesitant with the whole cuffs right below the knee thing because um, I like to wear socks and I like to feel like I'm covered and warm and uh, summer's coming and I'm notoriously overheated in the summer 
and I was very pleasantly surprised as to how comfortable the pants were, how breathable they were in the cotton. Uh, these are, this is a brown corduroy. So I know it's um, a little heavier, but sturdy. And the reason I'm picking a sturdier fabric for these for hiking is, um, you know, falling on rocks and brush and stuff. I've always traditionally walked in jeans because I really, uh, don't like things getting in, in, in my pants and <laughs> up underneath the cuff and stuff. So I was a little hesitant about these, but I think these are going to work great once I get my gaiters made. Um, <coughs> I really, really was comfortable. So I'm going to finish these tonight and then I think I'm going to start planning on the bodice to go with them. And then I also have the bodice for these blue things that I need to really need to figure out this fabric choice. I've gone back and forth and back and forth and I have footage of that and I'll show it to you. But I'm like all over the place with trying to figure out the fabric for a bodice that matches all three skirts. I think I figured it out. I think it'll be lightweight enough for summer. I just have to do it. And I'm just nervous. I'm, I'm just genuinely nervous. So anyway, now that I have the pants figured out, the pants pattern figured out, um, I'm really eager to make um, a particular skate hiking outfit I'm really excited to make that is bloomers and a bodice. That's the other reason that I'm kind of waffling on the bodice shirtwaist thing is um, I have in my head an image of a bodice that I want to go with these pants and it's not in the same time era that these pants are normally popular. So these pants in all the imagery I can see is 1890s and forward or 1889, 1890s forward. I don't really see them too much before, except maybe on young girls and boys. So it's not something that goes with the natural form era bodice silhouette, but I like the natural form era bodice silhouette. I like how it looks. I like how comfortable it is. And that's the style I want to make to go with these pants. So, um, because this is the first set, this is the first exercise <laughs> garment I'm making. I'm going to try it out. I'm going to see what it looks like and see if it looks okay. If it doesn't look okay, I will change my perspective, but I think it's going to look fine. This is the state of my studio. It has been three weeks since I've been able to work in here due to scheduling, life, and stuff. Look, I even have the bird seed stuff ready. I just haven't put it out. Um, this pile up here is a whole bunch of garments that are going to happen. They're going to happen this summer. Um, I moved my desk for a couple of reasons. One reason is, you'll love this, I got my treadle working but I converted it to I converted it to a hand crank instead because it was skipping stitches and I couldn't figure out why. But I got it to work. So now I have I sewed a shift last night with it. And then this, I'm gonna turn the fan off real quick so you can hear me. This is my new purchase. You will love this. I got this from the local historical society. Um, it was practically free. Uh, I did make a donation, so there you go. Um, it used to obviously have like a set in sewing machine it, and it could have been any brand, but it has these, and I'll post pictures, but it has these wonderful car carvings and wheat sheets on the outside. And I absolutely love these little drawers. I'm so excited. And the back door actually opens, so I was able to put my presser foot through the back and plug it in on the side right there. Now I'm just going to leave it open, but I will post pictures, but you can see the carvings when the doors are open.
It's really nice. I'm so excited that now I have a nice historically inspired sewing table. And if I want to put my sewing machine away, I can put it down in here and close the door and fold it all up. And so <laughs> really excited about that. So this right here, this pebbly cotton fabric, these are sheets and they're cast off sheets from a hotel, but they're hundred percent cotton. And I am going to make a summer uh, skirt and shirt waist with this. I've, I've wanted a white summer. I don't wear a lot of white because I am notorious for staining things, but I really want one. And I've ordered some insertion lace. And then I also found some insertion lace that kind of goes with this eyelet fabric. And I think I'm gonna use this eyelet fabric for like short sleeves or maybe some insertion. There's not a lot of it. It was a cast off. It was like three bucks at, at Joann's. So there's not a lot of it. I mean, a yard maybe, <laughs> maybe. Um, this stuff is usually like 15, $16 a yard or more. And I'm not gonna spend that amount of money. As y'all know from my channel, I just don't spend a lot of money on fabric if I can possibly help it. I think the most expensive fabric I've purchased is silk and I don't buy that very often. So there's that. Uh, this is a bodice that's a mock-up that I need to finish. Um, I, I have a, a blue bodice that's this fabric and then some shirt, white, blue stripey stuff. Uh, I need a summer weight bodice for work to go with my four blue skirts and I need to get that done. So there you have it. fun part is if you listen very carefully, you can hear a train in the background because I live one street over from the train and it runs frequently and often. why it does that but I waste quite a bit of thread but that's okay okay so what I'm doing is I have the front piece that I've already sewn the dart in in the front this is the um, second side to the front and this is the front side so I'm going to sew these two pieces together I'm actually going to do it from the other side because so I want to pay attention to where this is and I'm going to put my pen, my wrist pin keep on that I made a couple months ago. Okay, here we go. I just realized my stitch is a little wider than I want it to be. I want it to be a little bit shorter. What's nice is that with the hand crank, I have a little bit more control. And I can 
take it slow and I get a really nice stitch. I'm making this entire bodice with my treadle hand crank because I've had this treadle for about a year now, almost, maybe about a year. And I haven't been able to use it because the stitches kept skipping. So I'd sew an inch and then in that inch I would have three or four stitches that would be skipped. And it was really frustrating me. I couldn't figure out what the problem was. So I got a hand crank mechanism to go with my treadle and I assembled it fiddled with it a little bit, and lo and behold, no more skip stitches. I haven't been brave enough to hook the treadle belt back up again because I don't know if it's the, if it's me, user error, <laughs> in the treadle mechanism that's making the stitches skip. Um, because I've pretty much done everything the same. So I'm not real sure what I did wrong before, but I haven't had any trouble with skip stitches since, so. And I'm using the same bobbin thread. I'm doing all the same things. And I'm not having skip stitches now. And I can go really fast or I can go really slow. I like the steady and regular. Thank you. 